Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, June 18th. Today's topic is an open mic session. What's on your summer bucket list? Your show hosts are Peggy George. I'm Lori Moffat. Tammy Moore. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And Paula Noggle. Their special guests today are Paula Noggle, who will facilitate, and everybody in the room. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will introduce Paula for us. Well, I am so excited for this open mic show today. We always have such a great time. And it's so much fun to hear from so many different people on the topic of the day. And the topic of today is, what's on your summer bucket list? Well, Paula Noggle is one of the Classroom 2.0 live hosts, and she's an awesome contributor to our Classroom 2.0 live advisory, and constantly is sharing during our brainstorming sessions, and even more behind the scenes, making sure that things happen. So we can bring you great topics and presenters for every show. So thank you, Paula. She teaches fourth graders English, language, arts, and social studies in a public school just outside of New Orleans. And she has 40 years of classroom experience and is passionate about technology integration and connecting her students on a global scale. Paula is an avid Twitter user, and she moderates the fourth chat and the LA Louisiana Ed Chat. She's an ambassador for Edmodo and Simple K-12. She's a DEN star and leadership council member. And she serves as the Region 1 director for Louisiana computer using educators. Now that's one busy person. And we are so lucky to have her on our team. So with that short welcome, I want to turn the mic over to Paula, who's going to answer our newbie question and get us started. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, wherever you're joining in from. It might even be good evening. Thank you, Peggy, so much for that awesome introduction. And our newbie question today is, what is an open mic show and how does it work? Well. Basically, an open mic means that instead of having a presenter that we usually sit and listen to and we um, back channel through the chat, all of you in the room are now going to be, hopefully, many presenters as we go through the questions. If you participated in um, an educational chat on Twitter, it will be something like that. The questions will be posted. Um, I will try to get the people that signed up to answer first, and then we will open it up to anyone else who would like to answer the question. And you can do that by raising your hand, um, which is right below the participants window. And we will take you in the order that your hand goes up. So hopefully, this, if this is your first time doing an open mic, we will have a good time. We will get lots of participation from our audience members. And we are ready to go. And every time I click on the slides, it doesn't want to move. Come on. <laughs> Peggy, can you get it to advance? There we go. All right. So. Bucket, our summer bucket list question number one is, what is the first PD book you plan on reading this summer and why? OK, I am going to ask for Jessica, I'm sorry, Jesse to take the mic first, because he, that person is first on our list. And um, Jesse, all you have to do is click on the talk button. And it is your turn to share with us. Thank you, Paula. I hope you can all hear me. I'm, um, I had a little change in my uh, technology uh, communications here. So I do hope everyone can uh, listen. 
or hear me. So it's actually funny that um, this is my the, the first question that came up um, in, in this uh, event. Um, I actually ordered this book like a couple days ago because it was blowing up Twitter. And um, the book is called uh, Kids Deserve It. And it's by um, Adam Welcome and Todd. Oops. I have it in right here. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Todd Misloni. And uh, from what I, um, I've heard about this book, it, it, uh, basically it's, uh, um, it's about eliminating excuses and, and uh, challenging um, uh, our conventional thinking on, on, on teaching our, our kids. And um, they have a blog that uh, they all start, they started this, uh, this, this, this book or this book is based on. And um, it just really kind of, it just, I, I bought, I bought into it. So I, I, um, I'm, it's on order, it's coming from Amazon. And um, I, uh, I'm not, I kind of actually in, 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 uh, interested in, in, lit, in reading this uh, from cover to cover because it just, it just kind of screamed out, hey, you need to change what you're doing. And, and, and I usually don't do a much, um, uh, summer reading uh, during the summer, but this book definitely um, spoke to me uh, to to say to to read over the summer. So I'm I'm, I'm really excited that this book is coming out. Thank you, Jesse. Yes, um, and those of you that take the mic can have a chance to earn one of those uh, to win one of their books today. So Kim, yes, you are up next. Take it away. Okay, can somebody say, I can hear you, Kim, just to make sure. Okay, we, oh, okay, got it. My book is Programming in the Primary Grades. It's by Sam Patterson. I'm going to do a little name dropping um, because Peggy was able to let me join her when we met Sam for dinner one night. Um, he was over here um, looking for, looking into maybe moving to Phoenix, and he had one of his books with him, and I bought it for him right on the spot. And what I really love about this book, and I will be buying probably four or five more. They're reasonably priced, but to give to primary teachers and to give to a couple of upper grade teachers, because it's not even about the coding, it is about um, how the kids interact. And that's what coding really is about. It's about logic. It's about conversation. And he just, it's such a common sense book. It's talking about movement in the classroom and how you get to deeper understanding and how you can use it in all content areas. So I would wholeheartedly recommend his book just for a common sense approach. And I think if you have a teacher or know someone who is possibly looking to go in this direction, this is a nice, relatively quick read, though I've already tabbed and highlighted it. Um, I would suggest getting it for someone or getting it yourself. OK, once again, it's programming in the primary grades beyond the hour of code. And as is always the case, um, Peggy has that link already in the link. But Peggy, I think he needs to do something. I think with every book, we need to get a little miniature um, Patui Sam or whatever his name is, the puppet, to go along with it so we can have our stuffed animal with our book. OK, that's it. Thanks, guys. Um, Peggy, it looks like you will be up next. OK. I signed up for a couple of things, so I have to make sure I'm sharing on the right topic here. Um, I have so many books lined up that I want to read this summer, but the the latest one that I actually just purchased today is a book called Hacking Leadership by Tony Sinanis and Joe Sanfilippo. And they did a blab this morning kind of launching their book. Uh, it's just out. And it is an awesome book. I just know you're going to want to read it. Um, what I like about it is that it's so practical. They are two amazing principles. And they walk the talk, and they practice what they preach. And they really stress things like how important the 
homeschool communication is and that relationships are the heart of everything and how important it is to get student voice as part of the message you're sending out and passion above all. So I hope that you'll all take a look at that. You can get it for your Kindle. That's what I got where I got mine um, from Amazon and the link is in the live binder so you're going to love it because you can start tomorrow that's their focus what you can do tomorrow just get started so enjoy the book okay well that takes care of everyone who is on our uh, Google Doc sign up so now we're opening it up to people in the room. Who would like to take the mic and share what your first PD book is this summer? All right, Maureen, the mic is yours. OK, my first PD book is going to be the HyperDocs Handbook because I'm taking doing the HyperDocs Boot Camp starting on Monday. And the book just came. I have done nothing more than just peek into it. But I'm really excited to learn about it. And that's it. Sounds very interesting. I'm doing a lot of research into HyperDocs this summer. Wish I could take the course with you, Maureen, but I've got something else I'm doing for my district. All right, who else? Anybody else in the room? Like to take the mic and talk about their summer PD book? Go ahead, Kim. Well, I'm going to give a shout out to Jesse because he, we were at the um, C2C or CRC, I don't remember, um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit, conference a couple weeks ago, and they gave away some books. And as it turns out, Monica Burns was there, and I didn't get to go to any of her sessions, darn it, but the next best thing was um, she gave some books for the giveaways, and Jesse McKinley, bless his heart, not one, didn't one just won just one, but he won two versions of the same book, and because I was sitting next to him, I probably guilted him into it, and I'm okay with that. It's deeper learning with QR codes and augmented reality, and I've gone through the first couple pages. It's going to be a very slow read because... Um, I have to have my phone with me so I can use the QR codes to kind of bring it all alive as I'm doing it. Doing it. So a uh, shout out to Jesse to thank him for um, sharing the, his extra copy. And <laughs> yep, it was guilt. And I don't even know how much it costs. It, it's a small book. And it's another one of those that, man, I want to loan to some teachers that just start nabbing some sections out of it when I work with teachers and saying, oh, you might want to look at this and you, we can give this a try. So it is deeper learning with QR codes in augmented reality, a scannable solution for your classroom by Monica Burns. So Jesse, thanks again. All right, Maureen, your hand went up, but then went down, so I guess you changed your mind. Oh, there it is. Okay, Maureen. Sorry, my my computer, my connection is always really slow. Um, I actually just wanted to give a shout out to the new book by Karen um, Lerenman and Kristen White. I don't know if it's Weeden or Wyden. Innovate with iPad: Lessons to Transform Learning in the Classroom. They are both elementary educators and absolutely wonderful things on their websites and I'm excited to see their new book. I pre-ordered it. Sounds great. Um, I would just like to put my two cents in and talk. Um, I don't even have the link open, but I'm sure Peggy will find it. Um, any of the books in the Corwin series of Connected Educators, there are I don't even know how many different um, titles out right now have most of them, but they're all great reads, the ones I've done so far. Okay, last call for our first question. Is there anyone else in the room who wants to talk about their summer PD book? If not, we're going to move on to our second question. I'll give you a... Yay, Molly. Okay, Molly, take it away. Hi, I would love to read Fair Isn't Always Equal by Rick Warmelly. 
I've always wanted to look into that book. Thanks for sharing. That's a great one. All right. Okay, so let's see. Let's go on to question number two. My work. <laughs> uh, it just there we go. Thank you. Okay. What conferences, either live or virtual, would you like to attend this summer and why? And on our list, let's see if they're in the room. I think the first person up is Miss Peggy George. All right. Uh, this is also something that I am very passionate about. I love, those of you who know me, I love going to webinars and uh, virtual conferences because I can't travel to very many of them. So one virtual conference I'm really looking forward to this summer is EdCamp Global. And that link is in the live binder. It's awesome. It's like a 24-hour session. And people are sharing in a whole variety of ways. It isn't just one platform like Google Hangouts. You can do a Hangout, you can do a Blab, you can do a Twitter chat. There are just tons of different things that you can do. And it attracts people from around the world, and it's totally free. So be sure to uh, go to that link and check it out. Sign up so you'll get the notice and we'll uh, be notified as things are starting. It's the end of July, I believe July 29th and 30th, depending on which time zone you're in. The other thing I'm participating in is um, the the... I hope this is the right category for this. The, the Google Plus community for not at ISTE. And um, I'm going to be helping to curate a live binder of all kinds of resources from ISTE and from the not at ISTE people. So we don't have to miss out because we can't go to ISTE this year. So that link is also in the live binder. Join that community if you're interested in following the updates on that. We're going to have our own Ignite sessions and uh, Google Hangouts and lots of sharing. And the last thing I want to quickly share with you is that I created a live binder that is loaded with free webinars and free virtual conferences. And they go on all year round. So you're going to have to take some time to explore inside that live binder to see what might be coming up that you hadn't heard of or didn't know about and see if it's happening this summer. And that's it. Thank you. All right, uh, Maureen, you're up next. OK. Um, I'm going to go to um, the Scratch Conference. It's at MIT over in Cambridge. And I'm really excited about that. I went a couple years ago. And it's an incredible international conference with people from all over the world all talking about programming and not for me, as an elementary teacher with no background in programming, that you can get so much out of this from people who are just like you, people who can teach you. I'm really looking forward to this. So that's the Scratch Conference at MIT. I'm also doing a one-day um, pre-conference at Constructing Modern Knowledge just the, um, the pre-conference day on electronics, because I really want hand-holding and someone to talk me, walk me through Arduino and all that kind of stuff, because I, I think it's cool, but I really need my handheld. So I'm hoping to get that. And I'm doing one day of Scratch Junior down in Boston, one day of Kibo Robotics down in Boston. Kibo, for those of you who don't know, is physical. It's like a wooden robot, and you scan it. You scan wooden blocks to make it move. It's very cool. Um, so I'm doing a one day with that, and I'll probably go to Ed Camp, Connecticut, in August. So a lot of one day things and scratches three days. I'm really looking forward to it. 
Well, you definitely are going to be one busy lady this summer. <clears throat> um, I believe, Susie, you are scheduled to be up next and talk about your summer um, conferences. Okay, welcome from Indianapolis. Um, I've been able to be to several things already. Um, just yesterday we had Ed Camp Indy that I was in charge of, and, and while we didn't have as many people last year as last year, we still had I think at least 30 different school districts represented. So I'm coming off of an Ed Camp high, and I just dropped a link. Our DOE does a great job of managing some uh, grant money to have a program of speakers from all around the um, the all around our state and a lot of people like that are well-known speakers are in our state very affordable so I paid a whopping $25 to get two days of hearing Alice Keeler on Google and my mind is is more than overflowing and I went to another one that was hosted in my school district on blended learning and I talked to our director of e-learning for the state and she said it, a lot of it is just creative ways of using the money um, and that um, you know other states could do it too but I'm just amazed at the great speakers that I get to see for very affordable I'm also going to not at ISTE and I will be going to Nerd Camp in Michigan. Is anybody else in here been to Nerd Camp or going this year? I can drop the link for that. <laughs> Nerd Camp is two days of fabulous, fabulous celebrations of reading and literacy. And the first day is more like a conventional conference. And they have everything from authors to Donna Lynn Miller, uh, just even the Ignite sessions they have at the beginning make you glad that you're there. And it's free, believe it or not. And I'm staying at the nearby Albion College for like $20 a night. And then the second day is Ed Camp format. And they keep adding more and more authors that are going to be there. And uh, they also have Nerd Camp Junior, which I'm going to be there for the at the end of the second day. And they have a lot of authors and illustrators who come in to work just with kids. And this is in Parma, <laughs> Michigan. And conveniently, the next day um, in Michigan is Ed Camp Leader. And I'll drop the link. Whoops, that's Nerd Camp. Um, Ed Camp Leader in most places around the country is on July 11th. But in Michigan, maybe because of Nerd Camp, their Ed Camp Leader is on the 13th. And I encourage you to look and see. There's probably an Ed Camp Leader not too far from you. Oh, somebody else, Peggy dropped that too. Uh, that's, I met so many amazing people and a lot of them are the like big name administrators, very humble people. It's not like, yes, we're up here and you've all come to meet us. It's like, what can we learn from you? So I was very impressed with Ed Camp Leader last year. And then some other miscellaneous things. Another busy lady. All right. Laura, it is your turn to tell us about your summer um, conference plans. I always forget about the silly talk button. Sorry about that. Um, I am thrilled. I got to go to Collaborate <laughs> to Create, which was put on by Arizona's uh, is the affiliate ASDI, and it was a fabulous day of sharing and making and seeing great people. I love local conferences that, you know, great big conferences like ISTE, which I'm also lucky enough to go to, I'm extremely excited about because there's so much to see. But the local conferences where there's a couple of hundred people, uh, almost 300, I think. I think we had 240, I think, was the last count. Um, is fabulous because you get to share on a more uh, personal level with all sorts of people. Uh, like Peggy, I love the online conferences, Library 2.0 had a fabulous one. And it was just um, interesting learning. My, my 
conundrum was the fact that they had several sessions during the same time period, and it was, I found myself a couple of times jumping from one to another halfway through so I could try and catch it all. Um, it's just, it's, it's great fun. Um, another one that I wanted to let you know about, which I just added to the Google Doc, is edweb.net. Um, they have communities that are fabulous, and you can join communities best on your interests. I mean, they've got um, leadership. They've got a ton of them, so it's hard to list them out. And they do regular webinars, and it's all free. And you can also collaborate online. I regretfully haven't been in the online community that often, but it's just it's amazing, and with that, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for sharing all that wonderful information. And Kim, you are up next. Um, this is my summer of presenting and tech. Um, I, once again, those of you that know me, Peggy has been my mentor, and she's given me that um, nudge and decide to do things. So. I dove in. Um, I was fortunate enough to participate at the Collaborate to Create, and I just can't say enough good things. Laura, you're absolutely right on the face-to-face. -face. Um, that's where you really build your PLN, and it was wonderful. Um, not only presenting, which is always fun, but and I learned that you never should try to teach live binders in one hour, hard lessons learned. but. Peggy and I did something a little bit different. Peggy, would you like to, are you able to come on and explain what we did with the, the second presentation, the first, it was your first time doing this? <laughs> well, are you talking about our uh, Create Collaborate session? I, I assume you yep. are. I was busy typing um, in the chat. I started charging up your PLN. I could explain it, but I would kind I of can massacre do it. it. Good. Okay. I'll try to do it quickly. What was unique about it is that I was presenting on Blackboard Collaborate from home, just like we do in these sessions. Kim was presenting in the live face-to-face -face conference in the room, and it was projected up on the screen for people. So we did a combination of showing people what webinars are and how they work, and then sharing the great live binder that had all of the free uh, webinars and virtual conferences and ways to use Twitter and TweetDeck and Periscope, all kinds of things. So we're so glad that it worked out that we could do it where I was in one location and she was in another location and everyone at the conference got to benefit from it. It was it was a lot of fun and as it turns out um, one of the attendees was a teacher that had worked for Peggy back in the 90s, right Peggy? If I remember right, kind of cool. Um, I just came back from Camp Plug and Play, which is fun. That's from the AZK-12 Center. You get four days, you pick a strand, and that's what you work on. It was remarkable. Absolutely. Tony Vincent was there. He organizes that. And it's just hardcore, let's get down and get to it. I got to present at the CETA conference, which is in southern Arizona, and then attend conferences, which was amazing. I am so, so lucky that I get to go to ISTE, and I'm going to be channeling Peggy because I'm going to, I decided that she's not going to be there, so I'm going to be part of the Digital Storytelling Network, which is so exciting. I've never done this before. And I'm doing a couple of presentations at ISTE. Yes, that is me with a nervous voice. But I've decided it's time to step up to the challenge. And ISTE is the mothership. It's where everybody comes together with a common cause of under learning new ways of becoming better with technology and to help our students. And it's just the biggest geek fest and the best time in the whole wide world. I am officially done. All right. Well, that takes care of everyone that was signed up on the Google Doc. So we will now allow anyone else in the room. It's your turn. Um, Molly's got her hand up, but I think that was from the last round. Molly, uh, do you want to take the mic now? Okay. If oh, I, don't, I guess I have to put that. I have to put that hand down. Sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, Craig. Hey, my buddy, Craig. It's so great to see you here. Craig, take the mic and tell us what you're up to.
push the talk button above the participants' windows. <laughs> hey there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, so there's a whole bunch of different types of things that are going on within my PD world. I just came back from Q Rockstar Chico, where it is that I was social media director over there. And um, so hopefully you saw some of those tweets that are coming out from the Q Rockstar hashtag. There were just three camps that had happened. There's three days where it is that educators get together to be able to talk about all things tech. The participant attendee ratio is, presenter ratio is about 10 to 1. And then so it's very nice to have an intimate um, experience there where it is that there are not too many participants and where it is that you can be able to have those discussions right within um, each of those. It's, they, there are a couple more of those camps that are coming up and then so I'll be fortunate enough to attend an Oxnard one which is in Southern California where I'll get to meet a lot of my PLN there. I'm also fortunate enough to be able to attend ISTE this coming year. And then so that'll be my first time over at ISTE and I'm very sad that Peggy is not going to be there. And then so that is very, very sad. And yes, Paula, I do sleep. I'm going to go ahead and there's other things that are going on where it is that I am presenting over within locally and over at our district as well. And then so we'll have a summer learning academy that is going on and there are a bunch of different books that I want to continue to read as well. But it is great to finally participate within Live Classroom 2.0. And I will give back the mic. You need to come join us more often because you have such wonderful things to share. So we loved having you here. Okay, would anyone else in the room like to take the mic for this question about your PD? If not, we will move on to question number three. Going once. <laughs> Going twice? All right, we're moving on. <clears throat> oh, come. Did I go too far? Yep, there we go. Okay, so our third bucket list question is, what new tech tool, toy, would you like to add to your tech bag this summer? And first up on this particular question, we have Christina. So, Christina, are you ready to take the mic and talk about tech tool or tech toy? I am. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Thank Great. you. Okay. Thanks, Peggy. Thanks for in, um, telling me about this. And um, my name is Christina Cantrell. I'm from the National Writing Project. And um, I don't know how many of you know the Writing Project. Maybe you could just tell me in the chat. But um, uh, the tech tool that I'm coming with, which is like, doesn't, it, it's an old, one of the oldest technologies, <laughs> which is writing and, um, or not one of the oldest, but among the oldest, and writing letters. So we're doing a project at the National Writing Project called Letters to the Next President 2.0. And um, this is really um, uh, a project that is focused on supporting um, primarily youth 13 to 18 in um, publishing actually a letter to the next president around issues and topics that are most important to them. So it's, it's not about candidates, it's really about what do um, youth today and our future leaders and even our leaders today, what do they really believe um, is important in this election. Um, and it's meant to support civic as well as civil discourse um, and really give an opportunity for kids to respond and react to some of what is actually, you know, hard dialogue out in the world. Um, so I wanted to just invite you all right now, the website, um, if you go to the website, I'm putting some links in the chat, um, is teacher facing or educator facing. And so we're pulling together, we have a bunch of partners and we're working with KQED in California and the website is bringing together lots of resources to support teaching about the election, thinking about letter writing, thinking about how to support kids and tapping into topics of interest. Um, and also about how to supporting, you know, productive dialogue and even argument writing 
um, since many of us teach argument writing in the classroom, how to support that in classrooms and across disciplines. So, um, but in late July, the really exciting part though is in late July, that website, that same site will turn into a publishing site for youth. And it's a very safe and supportive site. This is completely created by teachers for teachers and youth. Um, there's no advertising. There will be no comments. And when we did this in 2008, we had over 10,000 letters published there from youth around the country. And each letter gets its own web page. It's up next to other letters um, by youth around the country. And you start to see a beautiful diversity of um, things that youth are thinking about and caring about deeply and writing about to the next president. So we really invite you to participate and um, just encourage you to sign up. And um, so it's kind of a multifaceted tool. The last thing I just want to say real briefly is that these letters from a technology standpoint, you know, the world has changed a lot since 2008 and we're more networked and we have more tools to write letters with than ever before. So we are um, accepting letters that are text-based letters, but also letters that might be made with video or might be made of audio or might be multimodal or include infographics or anything like that. So 2.0 is really about this being, you know, what does it mean to write a letter in today's networked and connected um, uh, world. So thanks very much. I really um, love to connect with all of you there and play with lots of different tech tools um, while we're doing it. Thank you so much, Christina. Peggy has shared that with us, and I've been doing some research about it. Um, I know it's a, for a little bit older students, but can my fourth graders participate? Yeah, so um, we've got a lot of questions about that kind of thing. And what we're, um, one of the problems is that it's publishing online. So with Sipacopa and everything, we're saying 13 plus. And just so you know, even with 13 um, plus, um, teachers will be in control of um, the publishing aspect of it. Kids can edit in there and everything. When we, but we have lots of writing project teachers who work with younger children and even older kids than 18. And what we're suggesting is, yes, use the same resources, come together as a community, write letters, and then um, produce sort of local events um, where you can celebrate those letters. And then you can share over the hashtag. The hashtag is um, uh, hashtag 2 next prez um, in a very sort of 2.0 kind of style. I'll write it here. But that's one way that um, younger kids can participate is by um, sort of tapping into the social, you know, sharing over social media, but doing it in your own context because we, we can't technically publish those letters of younger students. Okay, thank you for that information. All right, up next we have Susie, who's, and I believe uh, Maureen's going to piggyback on this about Breakout EDU. Yes, um, breakout edu. I don't. I, the right word is not sad, but breakout edu is spreading like wildfire, especially on social media. And an interesting thing about it is, um, teachers could have been doing some similar things and probably have to breakout edu. But the basic idea behind it is that it's kind of like a challenge. It's like a lot of the escape rooms and things that are that are very popular now. You put the participants in a room with several things that are clues to help them unlock several locks uh, that are on a hasp. That's a new vocabulary word I learned. That will open a box and. The cool thing about it is there is a huge Facebook group, almost 8,000 teachers or per people, and it is it was all, it used to be it was 7,000 not long ago. People are sharing how you can adapt this to your curriculum, and one of the cool things I like about it is that a lot of it is just for the intrinsic satisfaction of solving problems, working together, and figuring out a solution. And the teachers are having as much fun as the kids trying to come out with the breakouts. So I've done them about three times, and there are so many things. Uh, 
a few people started the idea, you can order the box with all the locks and different kinds of locks. You can also put together your own kit. And I, I would recommend looking at that Facebook group because, like I said, it's about 8,000 people that are sharing. People will say, I put this together. Would you go check it out and see how it works? And it's just, like I said, true collaboration and creativity. And it's, it's just been amazing how it's been growing. Uh, and then I also had listed, I won't spend a lot of time on it, Adobe Spark is a real simple tool to make images, videos. It's a lot like Canva. But it's, it's a very cool thing to use, too. And I, now I'll let Maureen or anybody else add about Breakout EDU. Great. This is Maureen, and I love Breakout EDU. Last year when I first saw it, I asked Paula about it because she's my go-to person. And she said, oh, it was great, but it was $100 for the box. So I put it off, and then I finally bit the bullet and did it. My kids loved it. I did it with um, two different sections of third grade, and I did it with fourth grade. And Every single class loved it. They called it hard fun. And everyone was so engaged. One class asked if they could do it again on a day where I wasn't going to be around. So we had to um, make an extra, I actually had to stay an extra half a day just because this class was so excited about it. If you haven't tried it yet, try it. This also, you don't have to buy all the locks, although they're very cool. There's also some digital breakouts, and you can just do them online. It's really fun. Try it if you haven't. Maureen, did you want to share something else at this point, or can I move on to the next person? Oh, yes. I just want two minutes on my new tech tool that I'm hoping is going to come in August, Cubeto. I'll put the link in the chat. It's another physical programming tool for kids and programming with wooden pieces. And I'm really into the, uh, connecting physical programming like Osmo coding and Kibo and Cubeto for the younger kids, connecting physical programming with um, more digital programming. Sounds interesting. All right. All right, Laura, it's your turn. You're up next. Well, hello again. Um, I'm really getting into trying to set a corner of my lab as a maker space. And one of the things that um, the school has invested in is little bits. So I've been playing with those a bit, and they are really fun. But my challenge, and, and I'll pose the question here to see if anybody has ideas, is that I'm not in a K-12 school district. I'm at Arizona State University, and my lab is visited by faculty, staff, and um, future teachers who are at the teacher's college at ASU. And I'm trying to figure out how a maker space is going to work with people who might visit the lab once every blue moon. So anything y'all can suggest would be great. I'm having a great time exploring little bits. They are fun and easy to do. So um, that's it. Kim, I believe you're up next. Mine's going to be relatively brief. Um, it's Scratch. Um, this year I was able to get a kindergarten teacher to start her students on Hour of Code, and it has been one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. We decided to take this class, and it was not an easy class, into Scratch Junior. They loved it. They ended up teaching two other class kindergarten classrooms in a preschool, and so I decided to bite the bullet, and it's scratch for me. And I've just spent four days of working on it. I've decided I am not a logical thinker, and that's okay because I can learn it. So that is now 
my focus, um, to change my way of thinking that I can do it. I'm the little engine that can code my way to the top of the hill. Love it. I'm done. Love it. Thank you so much. Peggy's up next, and then we'll get to Molly. Okay, I have so many things that I want to do this summer. I hope I have enough waking hours. But uh, one of the tools that isn't brand new to me, because I've been using it a little while, but I'm learning to use it in a new way, and um, that is the Participate Learning Chat for Not at ISTE 16. And what happens is that with Participate Learning, those of you who happen to see our early webinar where we focused on that, know that it's an ongoing um, hashtag, whether it's for an hourly Twitter chat or something that goes on for a long time. And I created a community there for not at ISTE, so that anyone who tweets using the hashtag not at ISTE will see their tweet come up in the Participate Learning community. And one of the amazing things about that, that site is that if you post a link in your tweet, that link automatically gets added to the resources for that hashtag in Participate Learning. So you can go back in and you can easily grab all of the things that people shared, whether you were there live following the tweet or not. They're always there. So I encourage you to check that out, especially if you're one of those sad people like me who can't go to ISTE and you'll be able to be in on the action. And I'm also helping to create a collaborative live binder with Barbara Talent from Live Binders for all of the not at ISTE resources. So that's one of the reasons I set up Participate Learning. So it would be easy to grab those resources and add them to that live binder. So a collaborative live binder is another new experience for me and a tool I'm looking forward to exploring. All right, Molly, you're up next. I would love to add Remind and Prezi. Um, any suggestions for um, students writing their goals and data notebooks from anyone? That would be great. I looked into SAS data notebook, but that looks like it's only compatible with iPads. Thank you. Well, hopefully somebody will be able to answer that. Okay, that takes care of the people that signed up on the Google Doc for this question. So the question is now open to all other participants in the room. Molly, don't forget to put your hand down. Um, so those of you that would like to take the mic for this, please raise your hand. Okay, we have dead silence. Um, I think, oh, there we go. Okay, Craig, it's yours. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to go ahead and just put a plug over there for Seesaw. I did use it with our students this past year, and then I teach fourth grade. And in using it, it is um, a way for students to be able to share their work within a digital space. And then so they call it a learning journal. So the students can go ahead and take a picture of their work using any type of device. And in doing so, they can also include voice about what it is that they are including. And they can also use text. One of the nice things is that we're able to connect our parents within each of their Seesaw learning journals as well, where the parents can see the work. So it's just another way to be able to connect with those families. And it's a great way to share that work and give the students another space to be able to um, promote their work and to be able to reflect upon their work as well. So I really suggest checking out Seesaw if you have not done so already. And 
um, connect with me to be able to say, hey, how might we continue to use this to be able to improve upon that learning experience for the kids? Awesome. I've used it a little bit and plan on using it a lot more. All right, up next is Carolyn Stanley. Take it away, Carolyn. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Long time no see. Listen, even though I'm uh, coming up on four years retired and I'm kind of old news now, I did want to reiterate that I've been using <clears throat> Snapseed, uh, which is a Google app uh, for photo editing, and I've been using it a lot uh, to edit photos. Uh, I'm managing a Facebook page for our local uh, Women Redefining Retirement, and I also um, use it when I uh, do the uh, Google site that I created for that organization. So uh, I just wanted to say again how great Snapseed is. I usually just go to that edit uh, photo and I use uh, shadows first. And it's amazing how you can have a photo that's almost black and you can bring it right up where it's, it's beautiful. And when I think of how much we used to pay for Photoshop, and you've got it right there at your fingertips in the Google Snapseed. And the other thing was I know a lot of people were not familiar with the SanDisk wireless drive. And I, despite all the online storage, I like to have the pictures from my iPhone backed up to a device that I have. And I bought this SanDisk wireless drive. I bought a 32 gigabyte. I've still got 20 gigabytes free. And uh, I think they've come way down in price. But it's really great. You just connect right to your device with a wireless. Uh, it makes its own wireless network. And then you can transfer your photos from your phone to the sand disk. Once they're on the sand disk, you can put them into your computer. It's easier than hooking your phone to your computer and transfer them to your computer. Or if you have, for example, an iPad and you don't want to use the, I, I'm finding I don't have a lot of space for, you know, transferring uh, files through. And my iPhone is a OS 6. I'm still running OS 6. It's a 4. So I don't have that airdrop and stuff like that. So I really recommend the SanDisk wireless drive because once you've got the pictures on that drive, you can hook to any other Android or uh, OS device and you can view your pictures on a larger screen. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. And now, uh, Dr. Thomas, it's your turn. Yeah, so last week when I was um, at the Blended Learning Forum at Warren Township here in Indianapolis, I learned about Clever.com. Now, this is probably only going to be of interest to folks like me who have responsibility for administering Google Apps and that sort of thing. But um, we're starting to get to the point um, where we're using more and more third-party uh, products with Google Apps, and Clever.com will help us to avoid um, chaos. Mostly um, the point of it all is, is that we all have a student information system. In our case, it's uh, RenWeb. So basically what uh, Clever.com does is it um, uh, syncs up with uh, our RenWeb uh, SIS uh, so that basically um, we can keep our list of authorized users for all of our third-party products uh, in, in, in sync. Um, you probably just want to go to Clever.com and read up about it. And especially if you're at a school with a, a Google Apps environment and you're not using Clever.com, you ought to get your admin sticker to look at it. Thank you for that information. All right, um, I'm going to open this up to anyone else in the room one last time. And then Peggy, I need to know what to do since we are now sitting on the hour. Uh, do we go on? Do we um, do our, our raffle? Oh, this is such a hard decision. I would love to keep sharing. If people need to leave, 
be know that we're recording this and you won't miss a thing. You can watch the recording later. But we still have some amazing things coming up to share and I want to definitely do the prize drawing. So I hope that if you've taken the mic to share that you'll be able to stay through the end so you will be part of that drawing. We have four great prizes. So let's keep going. Okay, what I think I, I'll do is we will go through question number four because it's about websites, things. Our last two were just more kind of fun questions about where you're going to spend your summer and, and what, what hobbies. But this is, you know, we tune in to get new ideas. So I think we'll just wrap it up with question four. Um, so our bucket list is what new website app extension would you like to spend time exploring this summer? And I know we did a little bit of that with question three. But this is more, that was more about tools and that you were going to add to your tech bag. And this one's more about any websites, apps, extensions. So first up on our list for sharing this one was Susie, who wants to talk about Adobe Spark. Yeah, and I goofed. I mentioned Adobe Spark in the last time, so I think the link has been in here too. So I will, I'll just move on. I also dropped in Triller. That's a fun kind of lip dub thing, and our summer of e-learning conferences are now having competitions to see who can come up with the best one. Sam. Awesome. Uh, Maureen, do you want to take the mic and talk about anything that you didn't add in the last part? Well, I think the only thing I didn't say was about Google Sites. And I'm sure everyone has heard that we're going to finally get an update for Google Sites. I've stopped, I had stopped using it because I found it so clunky and used Weebly and other things instead. But it's free, and if they really update it, I want to spend time on it this summer, if, if they get it out in time. Laura, I think you are next. Do you have anything that you would like to add? Sure. Uh, Adobe Spark is something I'd like to explore. I've heard more about it during this session, and I just haven't had a chance to go out and look at it. Another thing that I'm really intrigued by is sketch noting. Um, I doodle when I take notes, and I just I haven't quite figured out how to do that on um, my iPad. Uh, I, I just want to be able to take notes easier and take pictures and you know make it all cool. And I've seen Kathy Schreck's, Schreck's guide. I just saw it a couple of days ago when I was thinking about this question. And I'm looking forward to finding out more. Thanks. Perfect. OK, I'm going to turn, ask Lori Moffat to take the mic. She wanted to share something on this particular question. Thanks, Paula. I have been teaching Scratch for a number of years and get the question asked often, what's after Scratch? So I found a few places, a few websites that have more coding examples of to go beyond that. Uh, the one I just discovered this morning was studio.code.org. And there they have a wide range of courses that they've created. Uh, one that I started this morning was an accelerated intro to computer science course that's 20 different stages. And I think it's supposed to be a 20 hour long course. But it combines unplugged activities and online activities. They use Blockly, so it's similar to Scratch. And yeah, that, that's where, yep. They, they also added to Hour of Code options. I hadn't seen one for Star Wars before. I saw that this morning. Um, and they also, with at least the course I was looking at, show you the JavaScript that would replace the Blockly blocks. So this seems like it would be a good Scratch extension.
All right, Kim, I, I, I uh, kind of went over you because I know you've already talked about Scratch, but do you want to add anything else? No, thank you. Just the resources that are available for Scratch. Thanks. Okay, so this question is now open up to anyone else in the room. If you would like to raise your hand and take the mic to talk about any website, extension, app that you would like to check out. This is going to be your last chance to take the mic before we do our fabulous giveaways. Hi, Paul. It's Maureen again. I just wanted to um, put the extension for um, coding with Chrome on. I put it in in the chat, and it's something that's kind of new for me. And it looks like they combined pencil and a bunch of other things, Blockly, into a Chrome extension. So that's kind of cool. Okay, sounds good. Okay, going, going. <laughs> Somebody's trying to get on. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy and Paula and everyone within the webinar today. Thank you, Craig, for being here. Molly, you have any last thoughts, questions? <laughs> I see some names in the room that have not been participants on the mic. And before we go to the drawing, I would like to give you one last chance to take the mic and share something that you are going to be doing this summer. All right, Kim, it's yours, and then Molly. OK, I'm just sharing what I'm doing this summer. I'm lucky that I get to travel with um, my friend Joe, and we're doing a road trip up to Denver from Phoenix. And we're making it a three-day road trip. And we're using road trippers, which is going to be kind of fun. And that always gets us charged, because as we're in the car, we're talking about IST and stuff like that. So I'm just excited about that. That's all. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys at IST. All right, Molly, you're up next. I plan to get to the Grand Canyon this summer. Anyone else? <laughs> and Jesse. Well, my uh, summer is uh, some uh, a vacation out to San Diego and um, uh, some space vacations uh, in, in in Arizona and Maricopa County area. Um, I think we have a zip line uh, excursion planned. And um, of course, I'm, I'm sure everybody has their honeydew list um, very well planned out from their uh, significant others. So mine is uh, at least 30 items long. Yeah, you get All right, somebody's mic is still on. Ah, there we go. All right, so we have gotten to that point in our show where we are going to go ahead and do our raffle giveaways. So what's going to happen is we're going to have um, everyone raise their hand who took the mic. We will select four lucky winners. And we're going to need you to put your email address in the chat room. But it will just know that for privacy's sake, Peggy will delete that before this is rendered into the archive. So you're, even though we need your email to get the prize to you, uh, it will be removed from the chat before this goes public. 
Okay, so I'm looking down and seeing if everyone, oh, Dr. Thomas walked away. Oh, I hope he hurries back. Christina, your hand's not up and you did take the mic. Patty, we didn't hear from you. There we go. Peggy, can we put Dr. Tom's hand up for him? <laughs> yes, I will include him in the count. So we have nine people who have raised their hands. So what I'm going to do is do the random um, our organizer drawing for ten people. So here we go. It's spinning. And the winner for the first prize is number four. Number four. Who so was number that? Number four is Kim T. Kim yes, T. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Congratulations, Kim. I was just looking at that flash or the drive, the, the wireless sand disk on Amazon. Guess where it's going to be used. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> That's hey, great. Everybody. everybody. Lower your hands hand now, okay, everybody. Here we go. And so we can do this our... again. No, oh, lower do them. It again? Okay. Okay. Lower them so we can start I'm sorry, over you put, put with new numbers. Yeah. Okay, everybody has, everybody has to put it down. Put it down. So you'll have a new wait. number. Hold on a minute. <laughs> All right, Maureen, put your hand down. Okay. Peggy, Laura, put your hand down a minute. Okay, now put your hands up. Here's prize number two. So if you already have this, you might not want to put your hand up. But feel free to put your hand up every time. OK, keep them coming. We've got seven there. Kim's not raising her hand. Go. Molly's not. OK, OK, that's it. That's everybody that wants to be in that drawing. OK, Craig, last chance. He must already own that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm going to add Dr. Thomas there. So we have 10 yeah, he's people in. again. Oh, good. Uh, uh, okay, great. He's in. So, mm -hmm. so now we have 10, and I'm going to spin this again. And I just clicked on the wrong page. Okay, now the. Winner is number seven. Number seven. Number seven is Jesse. Jesse, please give us your email address. <laughs> please enter your email address in the chat. Everybody put your hands down so that we can get to the next prize. All right, I think everybody's down. So this is our third prize, Julie Lindsay's new book, Global Educator, Leveraging Technology for Collaborative Learning and Teaching. If you participated, get those hands up nice and high. OK, I think that's everybody, Peggy. Um, Kim's not participating. I'm not. I guess she's choosing not to. Um, so we're running on nine. It looks like. All right. I ran the randomizer, and the winner is number one. Congratulations, number one. All right, so Thanks, number Steve. one. <laughs> It's Susie. All right, Susie. This is fun. Yay. Okay. So Peggy will make sure she gets your email contact. Put it in the, in the chat. I'm sure I think Peggy probably already has yours. All right. And our last, everybody's hand has to go down. Put your hands down. All right. 
our last raffle for today's webinar is the new book, Kids Deserve It by Todd Nisloni and Adam Welcome. Put your hands up if you would like a chance to win this book. Christine is not, okay. Susie, not going to participate in this one. Just check in, Kim. All right, so we're going with just seven. Everybody's up that wants to be part of this one. All right. I love, you people are so sweet. That's lovely. All right, so Peggy, it looks like this one is going to be based on seven. Boy, the odds are good for this one. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, and we have a new number, and the number is number three. Congratulations. Maureen, yay, Maureen. Awesome. All right, so this has been so exciting. I have had a great time facilitating this open mic on our summer PD bucket list. And uh, we are very thankful to every, each and every one of you that came and participated. And now we'll do our, our wrap-up. So I think uh, that's Lori. Thank you. Actually, it's Peggy. And I'm going to do this really fast because I know we're way over time. But I just want to remind everyone that this was our last show before the summer break. So we always stop before ISTE. And uh, take the month of July off. So we will be returning on August 6th. And we have a fabulous show on August 6th with Lisa Highfield and some of her colleagues that helped her to co-author a book on HyperDocs. And I'm putting the link in the live binder for today. So if you want to explore HyperDocs during the summer before she comes on the show, feel free to do that. All of the resources are free and they are amazing. So with that, now Lori can take the mic and just take us right out. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a room session like this one. And as long as your session is public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher by filling out the form here or from within the live binder for each month in the resources section. Each month we have a featured teacher. As you exit the session, the survey should open. Uh, you can also take the link from the chat for the Classroom 2.0 live survey, or you can take the or find it in the resource tab of the live binder. Once you complete the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And please use a personal email address instead of a school email address because schools tend to block this from getting to you. Special guests today are Paula Noggle and everyone in the room. Steve Harkadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.